You know when you feel that you're just constantly playing catch up? I am convinced that the main reason we feel that way is because we have so many recurring tasks on our lists, things that are just really never done, cooking, cleaning, washing, working. And I think one of the best solutions to this problem is a regular reset. So that is what I'm going to be talking about in this video. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura and this is my monthly reset. This is a list of things that I like to do at the end of each month to kind of tie up any loose ends and to set myself up for success for the coming month. I do also do a weekly reset. I have previously recorded a video on that, so I will link it for you. But these are the things that I do at the end of each month. So today I'm actually going to go through my reset list and explain how I do things and why I do these things, why these are on my list. Now, your monthly reset might look completely different, but I think this will give you some really good ideas for how you can build out your reset. First thing that I want to share, because I think this is really important, is that the first half-ish of my list is all stuff that is done on my laptop. When you are putting together a list like this or any sort of to-do list, it's really important that you batch like things together. So all the things that are done in kind of one place or all the things that require the same tools, gadgets, resources, etc. But then the second half of the list is more focused on kind of chore type things. So things where I am up and moving about. The reason that I think that reset days are so great for overcoming that catch up feeling is because you're putting all of that stuff into one day instead of letting it seep into every single day of your life you are condensing it all down into one day and just knocking it out that means that you are constantly staying on top of things you're not falling behind with anything you're still getting everything done that you need to get done but all of your days are not completely taken over with these recurring tasks. You can actually make progress on the important things with all of the other days that you have. Honestly, regular resets have been a game changer for me when it comes to keeping on top of things without letting them get on top of me. So let me take you into my laundry room. It's looking a little worse for wear and give you a really good tip when it comes to figuring out your monthly, weekly reset. Clearly, I have some work to do here today. Now, I know I said that you should kind of batch everything together, start with one particular type of task. There is one exception to that, and that is for tasks like laundry, where you can kind of set something and it will be working away while you go and work on something else. So laundry is a really good example. There would be no point in me sitting downstairs at my laptop getting a whole load of work done and then coming up here and putting on a wash load because at that stage, an hour or two will already have passed and I'll have wasted all that time. So I'm gonna put on a wash load now, then get all of my digital stuff. Clothes can be washing. I can come back up, pop the stuff in the dryer and then go and do some other chores. So this is basically something that is working in the background for me. By the time I finished everything else, I can come back up here. The clothes will be washed, they will be dried and all that will be left is for me to fold, finish folding these, fold the ones out of the dryer and put them away. I feel like there are basically two types of people, those who like stuff their washing machines and those who just put in a handful of items and then let it go. Which one are you? Because I am 100% a stuffer. <laughs> Now that the laundry is running, let's come back to the list. So the first thing on my list, let me zoom you in so you can see, is to check Prime Reading, and I have that linked, and Amazon's first read. So if you are a an Amazon Prime member, you have access to free books, essentially. So every month they bring out their first reads, you will have, they will give you a selection of approximately 10 books, and you will get to choose one or two depending on the month, for free. And then Prime Reading is kind of like Amazon's lending library. You can borrow up to 10 books or magazines and just return them when you're done and then borrow some more. So there is no time limit on it, but you can borrow a max of 10. So because those update on a regular basis, I go in once a month and see if anything catches my eye. The next step then is to update my blog and to delete any spam comments. That just keeps my website running smoothly behind the scenes. After that, then I will update my financial spreadsheets. So I have two, one for business and one for a rental property that I have in Ireland. And both of those will have two sections, one for income, one for expenditure. I generally keep this updated throughout the month as I'm going, but at the end of the month, I will always go back through bank statements, 
transactions, etc. just to make sure that I have actually input everything. This is one of those cases where it's much easier to just kind of keep on top of it and maintain it rather than letting it go and then freaking out when it comes to tax season. So yes, I keep this one updated every month. And then I will update my editorial calendar, which is where you know, I plan out all of my blog posts, all of my videos, etc. And also I will plan for any social posts um, and I will even schedule some. So this is, again, just a part of the process that keeps everything running smoothly. It's so I know what I should be working on and when. Once I am done with all the digital stuff, then I will clear cookies and cash and reboot my phone and my laptop. Listen, let me show you something terrifying. Now, I don't know what browser you use, but if you are in Chrome, click these three dots here, go to settings. In this right-hand menu here, go to privacy and security, click view permissions and data stored across, across sites. And here you will see all of the sites you have visited recently and how many cookies they have on your device that are tracking you. Now, some of these are pretty innocent. There will be things like they might just be tracking for Google Analytics, you know, like statistical purposes. Um, for example, here, like YouTube. YouTube is tracking me with 25 cookies, but these are generally just like my preferences, videos that I have previously watched, etc. But there are others that basically just track you around the internet to see what other sites you are visiting so that they can target you with ads, essentially. So if I look here, I can see that Facebook has 10 cookies tracking me, Amazon has 15, Instagram has 12, etc. Like I said, some of these will be innocent, they'll be more for kind of like statistical purposes, but some of them are just designed for ads. So every month, and I've actually considered doing this on a weekly basis, but I clear out all of those cookies and all of those cash so that the longest any site or company or brand can track me around the internet is one month. After that, the history gets wiped. The only kind of downside, the only frustrating part of this is once you clear cookies and cash, it will log out of all of the uh, sites that you were logged into and you'll have to go back in and log, again, log in again. And that's probably why I don't do it on a weekly basis, but I'm kind of weighing it up because I think the inconvenience of having to log into stuff probably outweighs the fact that these companies know what I'm doing on the internet. If you click the arrow, it'll kind of give you a more detailed breakdown of where all those cookies are. Um, so like for Google, it's Gmail, it's actually google.com searching things, Google Docs, Google, Google Calendar, etc. But yeah, every month I clear all of this out. I do the same then on my phone, also closing out any browser tabs that I'm no longer interested in. And then I will reboot both my phone and my laptop just to give that fresh start feeling. By this stage, the clothes will normally be done in the washing machine, so I'll transfer them over to the dryer and then I will get some vacuuming done. I am not great at vacuuming or dusting, so by popping them on my reset days, it kind of forces me to actually get them done because otherwise I would just push them off indefinitely. Also, I usually have to go back to vacuuming because the battery just does not last long enough for me to do the entire house. So next on the list then is dusting my plants. So the other day I went to the store to get milk and cereal and ended up coming home with four new plants. <laughs> I don't even know how that happened but yes I take some time and just dust all of my plants. It just helps to clean off the leaves so that they can soak up some more sunshine. I honestly don't know if it makes that big a difference but I have kept these plants alive thus far it is a miracle, so I'm going to do whatever I can <laughs> to keep them alive. I will admit here that I do usually talk to them or sing to them while I am dusting them. So here, even though you can't hear it, I am actually singing somewhere over the rainbow <laughs> to my plants. <laughs> After that, then I will top up toiletries around the house. So hand soaps, dish soaps, toilet paper, wipes, all that type of thing. Just once a month, go through and make sure that everything is topped up, that I have enough stock um, of everything. And if something is running low, then I can make a note of it. And the next time I'm at the grocery store, or the next time I'm placing an order online, I can make sure that that is included. By this stage then, the clothes are dry. So I bring my laptop in and then I can catch up on two things at once. My favorite TV show and laundry. 
This is a classic example of the right way to multitask, and that is ensuring that at least one of the tasks on your list is something that is very passive. So for me, it's watching a soap opera. I don't have to put a huge amount of brain power into that. So those are two tasks that I am able to pair together and knock out in one go. After that then, I try and declutter at least five items. You know, I do regular decluttering projects around the home, but I still think it's nice to kind of keep on top of it. Five is a nice small number, it's generally easy to hit, but it just makes sure that on a constant basis, I am getting stuff out of my home. So for today, I got rid of an empty laundry detergent bottle, I got rid of an old coat belonging to my daughter, and then some stuff that was in a box at the bottom of the closet in my laundry room, full of kind of stuff that was left over from when our washing machine and dryer were installed. And then obviously I was able to get rid of that box then as well, this big giant box that had been sitting there for a long time. Usually after I have done that, then the vacuum cleaner will have had time to recharge so I can finish off anything that I didn't get done earlier. I also then try and do at least one project and complete any open loops. So uh, there really isn't a massive difference between those two things. But for me, a project is something that has kind of just turned into this big deal. It may not be, but... It's something that has been on my to-do list for a long time or something that I've been meaning to do for a long time and have been just putting it off. And then open loops are generally things for me that just things that I kind of meant to get done during the week or during the month and didn't quite get to. So my project for this month was to sew up a hole in one of my jumpers. This is a long, long overdue task. It had been sitting there for quite a while and I kept meaning to do it, but I just kept putting it off. So my monthly reset is a great time to just suck it up and get it done. Honestly, if it weren't for these regular resets and having to record these videos, I would pretty much get nothing done around the house. I mean, I'm pretty good at getting work done, like work work, but when it comes to cleaning, organizing, vacuuming, dusting, mending clothes, it would, it would, it would never get done. It would never get done. On a more personal note, this Tupperware box, this sewing box, is one of my most prized possessions. It used to belong to my mother, and honestly, I have no idea. I couldn't tell you if she gave it to me or if I just took it. <laughs> but I remember as a kid being absolutely fascinated by all the different compartments, all the different colored threads. It fascinated me, it still fascinates me. Even though I don't use it all that often because I don't sew all that often, I still absolutely love it and I still get that same little rush every time I open it and I see all the different compartments and all the little things inside. Do you have kind of a prized possession like that? Let me know what it is in the comments. I finally get to hang this back up in my closet. It has been in need of mending for a year and a half, maybe longer. Like I said, if it's not on a reset day or I'm not recording a video about it, doesn't get done. And then the final thing I do, it's really three things in one, but that is to journal, to evaluate the month that has just passed and to plan for the upcoming month. This is the point where I will catch up on some journaling. This year I've been very good at keeping up with it, but sometimes I skip the odd day here or there just because I'm too tired or whatever. So at this point I will go back and fill in any gaps if there are any. And I will also reread all of my journal entries from the past month. Something that I've started doing this year is including reflection and highlights sections at the end of each entry. So at the end of each day, I will reflect on any lessons that I learned and I will also write down the highlights from the day. Fun, happy memories, things that happened. From that then, from all the photographs and stuff that I took, I will kind of create a collage page, I guess. So it's just at a glance, all of the good things that happened that month. And from there, I will do a monthly review. Now, I have covered this in a previous video, so I'm not going to go into it in detail right here, but essentially I list all of my wins from the month, all of the lessons that I learned from the month, what my goals for the coming month will be and out of those which ones are kind of the top priorities and then I will just have a section for notes anything that occurs to me it just means that at the end of every month I have a record of what happened I have time to evaluate what happened I am making sure that I'm celebrating all of my successes and setting myself up for 
continued success for the coming month. When it comes to my goals for the upcoming month, I will kind of schedule some things in, but I keep it very broad. I generally just give myself an overview or an outline. I don't do any detailed planning. I save that for a weekly basis, but this is just to give me an overview so I know what types of things that I want to be working on and how they will kind of generally slot into my weeks. And that is another month wrapped up. That is how I stay sane with all those like recurring tasks. I just put them all into one day, knock them all out in one go, and then they don't take over the rest of my week or the rest of my month. Like I said, I will link my weekly reset and my monthly review. Those are separate videos. They would take too long to go into here, but let me know what is one goal you have for yourself for this coming month. And until next time, Karev Milamagwev. I'll be speaking my shift, shake it up. Slow on.